Hi there, and thank you for joining me for today's live reading of The Strategist, it's the fifth book in Water Fire Rising series by Nadia Hahn, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue, Arrow. My heart hammered as I sat on the city bus, waiting for my stop. The short ride seemed so much longer than usual. Why was the bus going so slowly? I glanced around at the crowd on the bus, spying to see if those dangerous men had followed me. An old lady wearing a straw hat with a daisy sat two seats in front of me. Two teenagers giggled across from her. They had probably skipped school like my friends and I had today. Three men took up the back seats of the bus. I'm safe. I released a slow breath, even though nerves ravaged my stomach. I didn't see anyone resembling those gangsters who had killed that man, but that didn't mean they wouldn't come after me later. Why did the man with the slash on his face let me and my friends go? Was it a trick to follow each of us? I glanced outside the bus, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. People were friendly to you when they wanted something in return. What did he want? Was I being paranoid? Probably, but I had good reasons. I trusted very few people. Life was a bitch. The only people worth my time were my four best friends. The bus finally pulled over for my stop and I stood from my seat, slipping my backpack onto one shoulder. I got off the bus, but didn't go straight home. Home wasn't that safe either. The wound on my shoulder still stung from two nights ago. I didn't tell my friends about my dad's drunken assault this time. It was old news by now and they would have made a big deal out of it. Life was hard and I didn't want it to be more difficult. My mom died when I was 12 and my life turned to hell. At 15, I'd gotten used to the ugly side of life. On terrible days, I wondered if foster care would be better for me. Then again, who knew where social services would send me? I did my research, and I'd rather be home with my abusive father than with abusive strangers. The world was a messed up place. If my dad went to jail, I'd be an orphan and thrown into a messed up foster care system. What if they took me somewhere far from my friends? What would I do? How would I meet with them to continue our Water Fire Rising video game venture? No, these boys were all I had. There was one place I could go besides home. I yanked the door to Pam's diner open and entered my safe haven. It gave me a place to go when I had nowhere else. Hey, you're early, Pam eyed me as she wiped a table with a white cloth. She had curly red hair and freckles. She was in her mid-30s and the owner of this restaurant the place where my mom worked before she died of liver failure. Deep down, I knew my mom had died of heartache. My dad wasn't a good husband or father. He was before he started drinking. Yep, I forced a smile and slid into my usual corner booth, placing my backpack beside me. Seeing Pam made the erratic bat wings flapping in my stomach calm a bit. Got homework to do? Her brown eyes warmed on me. Yep, I lied. Teachers didn't give us homework when it was so close to the end of the school year, but I knew she was trying to get information from me like she always did when I came here to get away from my alcoholic dad. She knew he'd hurt me before, and she'd called the police. I'd stayed with Pam for a few weeks while everything was sorted out with my dad's arrest. I didn't want to be a burden to Pam or go to a foster family, so I lied and said he'd only hit me once. Dad promised to stop drinking and attended his AA meetings but he didn't take long to fall into the old routine. Pam didn't know that, and I didn't want her to worry. She'd already done enough for me. I spent time at one of my friends' house whenever I could. Avoiding my dad had been my survival method. Let's feed that brain of yours, she studied me carefully. What do you want to eat? The usual. No fever? She placed a hand on my forehead, and I jerked. You okay? I've never seen you this pale. She slid into the seat across from me. Want to tell me what's going on? Did your dad? No, I'm just tired. My friends and I were working on a video game and I've been staying up late. That wasn't a lie, just not the whole truth. Oh, that water fire rising thing, right? Yeah, she was the only other person who knew about my passion. Pam smiled. Your mom would have been extremely proud to see you chasing your dreams like this. She rose from the seat. Food will come right up, and don't you dare pay me. She pointed at me with her index finger. I need some help in the back room when you're done, okay? I nodded. Thanks. 
My dad always left some lunch money for me on the kitchen counter. I guess that was when he was sober and remembered he had a son still in school. I'd saved that money to pay Pam, but she never took it. So in exchange for feeding me, I took out the trash and broke down boxes for her. She said my mom was her best employee and didn't mind helping me. By the way, your dad is eating with a woman on the other end, Pam said before walking to tend to another customer. Shit. If he caught me skipping school, he'd beat the crap out of me and kick me out. I slid further down the booth. He could probably recognize the back of my head. I didn't understand why he kept drinking when he knew it changed him. Maybe I reminded him of his responsibilities. Or maybe he was stressed and needed someone to hit. I'd fought back a few times, but he was bigger and stronger than me. Though he didn't hit me when he was sober, he ignored me. Neglect was also a form of abuse, wasn't it? Abuse came in all shapes and sizes. But what could I do? My friends would help me, but I didn't want to burden them. Besides, it was embarrassing for people to know how shitty my life was. I snuck a peek toward, down toward the other end of the diner. His back faced me. A pretty Asian woman smiled across from him. Then the door chimed and four Asian men dressed in black suits entered. My stomach clenched. Did the gangster send their men after me? I slid further down the seat so they couldn't see me. I shouldn't have come here. What if they destroyed Pam's restaurant? Their footsteps sounded elsewhere. They weren't here for me after all. It's time to go home, Angela, said one man. I don't want to go, said a woman. Your father won't like it. Go home with them, Angie, said my dad. A dispute occurred between my dad and the woman, but she eventually said, fine. I heard them exit the diner. I glanced out the window, which was partially hidden by the flower bushes. My dad held the woman's hand until one man broke them apart. Who was she? Stay away from her, said the man with a snake tattoo on his neck. Angela wiped the tears from her eyes. She tried to reach for my dad, but the men ushered her away. Was she his new girlfriend? Mom and I suspected he'd been cheating since he always came home late and never gave a straight answer. That had made her sad and worsened her condition. How could an injured heart heal the body? I'd never forgive him for that. I won't hurt her, my dad told Snake Tat. Just do your job and you'll get paid. If you don't, you know the consequences. Snake Tat smirked and escorted Angela into an expensive black car with dark windows. What was my dad doing for these dangerous people? Chapter 1. Vivian. Any news on Amy yet? Dad asked. The worry in his voice practically seeped through the phone. I hated that he was going through this stress. It wasn't good for his weak heart. Not yet, Ba, but I've got a lead. Amy's a smart girl, so don't worry. I stared at the picture of the unique nine-year-old girl splashed on my computer screen. She had big, curious eyes and adorable dimples, but it was her brilliant mind that stood out from everything else. They won't harm her. If anything, I'd be worried about them. He let out a laugh which was what I'd wanted. The not knowing is killing Will and Susan, he said. They've lost so much weight. Will and Susan had helped my dad and me during a difficult time in our lives and were practically members of our family now. Amy was like a niece to me. Will was the doctor who'd taken extra care of my injuries back then. If it weren't for him, I would have developed other issues beyond the physical wounds. When Amy was abducted while on a field trip to the zoo, the shock shook us all up. Dad and I had tried our best to live a quiet and simple life in Northern California after my mom died. But deep in my heart, I had known this day would come. My connection to a dangerous crime family would eventually come back to haunt me. I'm doing my best, Ba, and I'm doing it discreetly, I said, trying not to give him any reason to worry about me, too. I kept replaying the video from that day, Viv. They took her in broad daylight. That meant these people didn't care if they were caught which made them even more dangerous. But I said, a mistake, and we'll catch them for that. Though the kidnappers wore masks and abducted two other girls, Amy was the only one who hadn't been found. Or rather, she was the only one who they hadn't released. The other classmates were released that evening at a shopping plaza. They'd been forced to wear blindfolds, which prevented them from seeing their kidnappers. I knew they'd released the girls to distract the public. Amy was a prodigy. She was a target because of her brilliance, just like my mother. Mom had been a prodigy, and she had made a lot of money for the triad, an organized crime syndicate that dealt with extortion, 
sex trafficking, illegal gambling, drug trade, and the laundry list went on and on. My grandfather, Stephen Kwan, who went by the nickname King Viper, was the leader of the Taipan Triad until his death eight months ago, around the time of Amy's abduction. I hadn't seen my grandfather in years. Though he was a dangerous man, he loved my mom and me and ensured our lives would be undisturbed by members of his faction. But he was no longer alive to keep that promise. I knew little about the honor system within a crime organization. Was there such a thing? How long could one man's word hold power after his death? Had the Taipans taken Amy? I wasn't sure, but my intuition told me to look in that direction. My dad coughed and I could hear him drinking something. We'll find Amy, Ba. I promise. I don't want you stressing out. And I don't want Rose calling me about your condition either. Rose Tran had been his nurse for the past few years. They'd become friends, and I could tell there was something more between them. But Dad didn't want to admit anything to me. He hadn't dated since my mom died, and Rose was the first woman who'd caught his interest. She'd taken great care of him and always called me when Dad was being stubborn about his medication and workout routine. Dad sighed. I know, I know. I'm trying not to add to your burden. You're not a burden to me. I want you to focus on your health. Don't worry about finding Amy. That's my job. I don't want to put you, I don't want you putting yourself in danger. Will and Susan wouldn't want that either. Promise? Yes, I promise. I agreed. It was the best I could do without flat out lying to him. To find Amy, I had to step close to the snake pit. Danger was part of that game. A scared little girl was waiting for someone to save her. Was she still alive? Stop it. Don't think like that. They need her. They won't hurt her. The voices warring in my head drove me crazy. My life had been consumed with finding Amy. I'd resigned from my pediatric dental position and moved to Providence to start a new practice. It was eight months since she'd been kidnapped. Most people would have assumed she was already dead, but I knew in my gut that Amy was alive. I'm going to buy some fruits and flowers for the altar. I'll make a donation to the temple too. Your mom, our ancestors, and all the gods and goddesses will watch over you and Amy. Thanks, Ba. I smiled as I imagined him making the offer. Believing that there was a higher power protecting me brought him peace. Dad's parents had taught him the Vietnamese tradition before they both passed away in a car accident. I never got a chance to meet them. Let me know if you need anything from Agent Stone or me. Amy's parents had hired a private investigator to help locate her. So far, he had discovered nothing either. A knock sounded on my door, and Dakota, my dental assistant, poked her head in. The look on her face told me it was an urgent matter. Have to go, Ba. Talk to you soon. I hung up the phone and glanced at my watch. Three hours until the wine expo. I had time. I walked to the dental chair and sighed when I saw Chicken standing with an older woman with gray hair and a twisted bun. Chicken was a tall, lanky man with a kind face and a full heart. He wore a black t-shirt and jeans. His dark hair was swept to one side, looking like one of those K-pop stars that Kaylee loved so much. I didn't know why people called him Chicken, and I never asked. He was known in the area as a thoughtful man who cared for his grandmother and her friends. My office treated many of them, and most didn't have dental insurance. How can I help you? I asked the young boy who was holding his hand to his cheek. Max has a bad toothache that's getting worse. His grandma's here with him, Chicken explained. They don't have... I'll take a look. I patted Chicken's arm, stopping him from stating the obvious out loud. Other patients were around, and I didn't want anyone complaining about my good deeds. People could twist things for their own gain, which could cost me. I couldn't afford any setbacks. My time in Providence was to find Amy. Then I could return to California and resume my simple life. Thanks. Chicken nodded and tucked his hands into his jeans. I led Max into the exam room. Chicken and his grandmother stood against the wall. On the stool, I scooted closer to the eight-year-old boy. What's going on, buddy? Wincing, he put pointed to his right cheek. It hurts a lot. He didn't sleep well last night, said the grandmother. I looked at the fearful boy. Don't be scared. I'll take good care of you. Cavities are afraid of me. Now open wide. Dr. Vo has magical powers, Chicken winked at me. With a quick, rev quick review, my heart sank. You have an infection in your primary molar. I looked up at Chicken and the grandmother. It needs to be removed. I can do it right now. Please, said the grandmother. 
Max beamed when everything was done, carrying the plastic baggie filled with a toy, a fancy toothbrush, toothpaste, and floss. Your adult tooth will fill in that space soon. Make sure you brush and floss twice a day. No candies. Max nodded. Thanks for squeezing us in, Chicken said as the boy walked to the front desk to check out. Are you related to Max? No, he lives in the same complex as my grandmother. He reached for his wallet. Can I give you some cash to cover part of it? Don't worry about it. I waved a hand. I have a fund for these kinds of situations. Thank you, Chicken said. Max and his grandmother were busy putting on their coats in the waiting area. I told Allison, my office manager, to use the kindness fund to pay for their visit. Most dentists would call my deed an unprofitable business practice because I wasn't making money, but I didn't care. The kid went home pain-free today. If I were his parents, I'd want that for him too.